Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you guys are all fine and had a great holiday. I know this video has been really long overdue, but I've been really busy in the last couple of months and I don't want to push out content when I didn't have enough time because if I want to make a video, I want to make sure that they are educational and entertaining at the same time. But now here we are in 2024. The first video of the year and this is one of the highly requested videos from you guys and it is all about render passes what passes i render out from blender and how i use them in photoshop now a quick disclaimer all of the steps that i am showing you today in this video are all according to my personal preferences you may see some other people using more passes than i am gonna show you today but for me, these are the four main passes that I render out every time I do an artwork in Blender. The first is the beauty pass. The beauty pass basically is everything combined. So what you see in Blender's viewport, that is beauty pass. The second is an AO pass. It creates a deep shadows that you find between cracks and seams and it will help us create a more realistic render when we overlay them in post-processing software like Photoshop. And the third is the Volume Direct Pass. It is basically just a volume render, but just using the direct light bounces of the scene. We can use this to add more volume to the whole scene. And finally, the most important pass of all, it's the mist pass. It is basically the same as a depth pass. It just calculates depth from your camera. The further it is, the lighter it gets, and the closer it is, the darker it gets. But by using this, we can control certain elements that we're gonna put in in post-processing software to go either behind or in front of certain things in the scene. With the basics laid out, let me show you how to Render all these passes through Blender. And here we have the scene that I worked on quite recently. To render the passes, go into the Properties tab, click on View Layer, and under the Passes tab, you'll see all these options available for you. And here you can select whatever you want to render out. So let's select the Mist, Volume Direct, and Ambient Occlusion. And after that, the last step is to check your mist pass range. To do that, click on the little drop down arrow beside a viewport shading and click on the render pass and choose mist. Then you'll see this mist pass in the viewport. As you can see, the darker values are closer to the camera and the lighter values are further away from the camera. And we can change the range of this by going into the world tab and under the mist pass, you can see the start and the depth. The start is where the darkest value will start and the depth is how far we want to capture. One thing to keep in mind is that sometimes toggling into mist pass viewport can sometimes crash your blender. So if that happens, what you can do is you can select your camera, go into data tab and under viewport display, toggle the mist. As soon as you do that, there will be a line appearing in your viewport that will show you what the range of the mist pass is. For instance, if I change the start, you'll see it shifting towards the camera a bit more and we can tweak the depth here as well. So once you've set the range of your mist pass, all you have to do is click on render and render image. A quick note we're setting the range of the mist you don't have to cover the entire scene just start from where the foreground ends and set the depth to a point you want to cover in your scene once you have rendered this out this is your beauty pass all you have to do is alt s and save it somewhere then to get the other passes you go into the compositing tab in blender if you want to see what you're doing Add a viewer node and plug those in. To combine the node lines, all you have to do is shift, right click and drag and cross the two lines together. To get the mist pass, plug in the mist. As you can see, the mist pass is really noisy, so let's add a denoise node in between. And if you go back to the rendered tab, you'll see the mist pass being shown and you can Alt S to save it again. Same goes for the other two. 
just plug it in and then save it again. Now that we have rendered out all of the passes, let's go into Photoshop and see how we can use these in post-processing. So we are in Photoshop. I have imported all of the images to here. Let's start with the AO. AO is basically just to add in a bit more details into your render. The way to use it is to change the blending mode to either an overlay or multiply. Note that if you choose multiply, it will make your scene a little bit darker. But if you choose overlay, it will make it a little bit brighter. For this one, I'm going to choose multiply and you'll see that it doesn't really look good. It's because we have to tone it down. So tone down the opacity a little bit. Then you'll see it being affected in the dark crevices areas. The shadows are much more prominent and gives us a lot more details in those darker areas. As for volume, set it to screen and lower down the opacity again. This might not work for every render, so you don't have to use it every time, but sometimes it will enhance the volume that you get from Blender by a lot. Before we get into how to use the mess, you'll have to understand how masks work in Photoshop. To create a mask, select the layer you want to create a mask for, and then click the mask icon at the bottom. Once that is done, click on the mask that you created and then you can choose a brush and paint in with either black or white. If you paint in black, it will remove the areas that you paint in and if you paint in white, it will appear again. By using a generated image like the mist pass as a mask in Photoshop, you can control very easily where you want to put things either behind or in front of certain things in the scene. So all you have to do is select the mist layer, control and click the thumbnail of the mist layer, and then control C, or click on the mask that you've created before, and control V. As you can see, you have pasted correctly the mist pass. Control D to deselect as well. Now since the mist pass has very low contrast, you will not see it doing much of a thing. So what you can do is select that mask, go into image, adjustments, and levels. Here you can tweak the black values and the white values to suit your needs. For instance, I want this smiling emoji behind the character, so let's tweak the values. Let's make the darker areas covering the foreground and the character, but everything else is in white. Once that's done, click OK and tap back out. And now you'll see it being perfectly behind the character but still in front of other elements in the scene. With this technique you can add elements like fog, birds or anything that you want in your scene without having to add them in Blender. That's pretty much it for all of the passes. I hope you guys learn a thing or two and I will make sure that I pose another video pretty soon and I will also have a big announcement pretty soon regarding something that I'm going to release to the public very soon. So stay tuned for that and take care.